but so this is like a, a 190 thermostat out of a 911 Super Carrera. Update on the Lotus here. Got this all po uh, pulled apart, and then the oil pan is off because it was leaking. So we're gonna reseal that. A CV joint uh, kind of blew up here, splattered the whole wheel well with CV grease. So that's pulled off too. Got to fix that. Up front, we've got to pull off the spindles here. And so we can machine the arms so we can get more camber for more grip on track. Just needs a little bit more, but unfortunately it's maxed out currently. So that's an update on the Lotus. On the Porsche, got Brian over here. About the same power in it. We got to put on the rear bumper and bumper top here. Is that what you're tackling right now? Um, yeah, Jay's bringing some stainless steel Nighthawk. Sick. Dope. And the front's already on over here. Front looks great. And I actually made these cuts right here for our Hella headlights. Not the best cuts in the world, as you can see, but you know what? That's okay. These guys are putting on pinstriping. Yeah, pinstriping, red pinstriping, so we can tell which direction the gas uh, filler cap can uh, go on properly. Update on the transmission as well. Transmission and gearing, everything is completely done. Um, we even have a mechanical sensor right here to uh, open and close the oil cooler for the transmission um, when it gets to 170 degrees, I believe, and it will just do it completely automated so we don't have to tune that to mechanical so that's dope there's that let's dive in they were on the it's a lot heavier than uh like a lot of weight they're steel with rubber i mean the original gt cars had fiberglass here it's too expensive for us though i could probably get them the problem is they're 400 dollars a piece Probably too expensive. We can do those over time. Yeah, we can do those over time. And we'll add weight to the car. Do that. The early, early struts from 72 back had a three inch spacing for the brake bolts. In other words, the brake caliper bolts on with a three inch bolt spacing. After that, everything went to three and a half inches. So it's hard to find brakes, big brakes, with three inch spacing. And this is an issue for all. PMB, which is one of our major sponsors, yeah. he's the number one brake remanufacturer in the world on Porsche brakes. Anyway, these are off of an Alfa Romeo Milano GTV. They have the same brake spacing. They're made by Brembo. This caliper, like, weighs nothing. It's as light as a better. But it fits that spacing. I don't know if we're going to keep these though, because they changed the rules, I can put boxster brakes for no points on this, and they're about this big, four piston for anything. The problem is we have to make special adapters to for the three inch brakes. Uh, there's somebody making them. If, if, I, if I had three and a half inch struts on here, which would be 73 and on, all the way through the Carreras and everything, everybody makes an adapter. 200 bucks for the set, and you put your Boxster brakes in. And Boxster brakes are Brembo, they're light, they're four piston, and you can get endurance brake pads. They're like 20 millimeters thick. So we could run like two or three days on one set of pads. With as light as the car is. So what we're thinking before we race again is we're thinking about moving because the rears are three and a half inch spacing the same. So right now what has happened is we took the front brakes, put them on the rear. Those are the stock 911 set brakes. And we put these on. 
Now we're thinking about taking this off. Trying to take other classes? <laughs> putting these on the back. Like advanced Spanish? And putting boxed sure. or something. And you, you don't have to bring five back. <laughs> because we can run as big a brakes as we want. Yeah. What's really cool is look at these. These are 993 turbo brake scoops. So this is a OEM factory 993 turbo part. And we welded the, the brackets on here. So if we snag one, all we have to do is unscrew two bolts, take it off and put on a new one. And they're only like $22 a piece. Really? The other plastic. These are straight what the Porsche, Porsche uses. And you can see how they just scoop the air right into the back. This is sort of a cool deal. These sit about this far off the ground. They sit about this far below the, the spoiler. And you can see they're, they're out like this now, but when the car goes up, they, they scoop level. <laughs> this is one of my favorite, one of the, one of the favorite things that I've done in this car. These are, this is a cool, it's simple, it works, and easily repairable. Uh, the reason I didn't go with the regular ones, you know, where they put the hose up here and run the duct, is because it fills with clag, it fills with tire clag, and they're always getting clogged up. And that's another problem. Every time we pit, we're gonna have to clear the tire clag out of our front oil cooler. So this, see all this? This is all completely custom. It's a fiberglass shroud. Did you make that or buy it? No, you can still buy that. You can buy the shroud, but the bumper, like this, see these cutouts here? These are all cut out. I welded those, welded all these back in and then and then this was all cut out, and you can see the front cooler in there. The cooler is RX-7. It was an RX-7, modified RX-7 cooler. It's the same size as the original 914.6 GT cooler. And so we have this, and you can see how it ducks. Uh, can you hand me that stick? I'll hold it. It's fine. Um, don't let that. So the oil lines have to come all the way from the middle, from the thermostat. There's the thermostat right there. It's a 911 thermostat, and then they go in, and it's all shrouded. Oh, and this is taken. This is all. I mean, we took all the stock wiring out. It's all no. been built new. No. No. This is our our driving pump, and then yeah. we have an <laughs> engine fuel pump in the back. So two <laughs> so what happens is this pump. And we have a big fuel filter here. This pump takes it out of the tank, sends it to the back, and puts it in a two-liter tank that's sealed completely. And so we go in to there, and then we have another pump mounted to there, and that feeds the engine. And then the return off the engine comes back into the surge tank, and then the return from the surge tank comes back into the bottom of the fuel. And the reason they do that is because the surge tank is about this big. If you go into high banking turns or whatever, it, it will, will never start. It'll pump every last drop of that out into the surge tank. So we're trying to get as much fuel as possible. We have around 17 gallons in there. We have a quart in there. I mean, you might think a quart. Every, every quart. And then the surge tank, you're allowed to have a two liter surge tank. So, half a so we're playing around 18 and a half gallons of fuel, which is very important. When you start endurance racing, you would give up horsepower and a lot of stuff to get more fuel in the car because you want to last your two hours. But we have mandatory two hour stops, so we make two hours. Battery box, this is all custom. All the Does the Miata make two hours? Or is it like an hour? The Miata makes an hour and 51 minutes. That's always been the problem with the Miata. But we got our new ECU, yeah. and we're hoping to tune, that's not the nine tune into two hours with the Miata. That's the reason we did it. Because we could never, we were always about eight minutes short of two hours, which in an eight hour race is bad. Seven hour race is fine, but eight hour race, it's This has all been painted and done. We have no, you know, it used to have motorized headlights, you know, like all the 914s, all the way cut out. We're using, and then there's another set of brackets that holds here. We want to put them on that way, so we have two sets of brackets. I think we're going to leave the gaskets out. We might run, like, just one gasket right here, and we'll leave the rest out. We don't need the gaskets. This is all new, you know, this is all a new fuse box, all new relays, all new relay boards, everything wired. 
but I wired it on the interior. The soft lines come off the cooler. They actually, look at this, they come through to the cab. And the hard lines come through right here. These are exact copies of the original hard lines on the 70 race car that won. Exact copies. So these aren't the stock lines? There's, you can't get them. So these don't exist. These only existed in the 914 racing department, you know, in the race cars. Yeah. A guy somewhere, I was in Indiana, convinced somebody who owned one of the original 13 GT cars to take these off, send them to him, and he copied them. They're like, what did I pay for this? Like $900 or You know, these are stainless steel. Original Porsche ones were brass. Okay. Original Porsche ones. But these are the exact how they bent them. And that's how Porsche did it. They came into the cab, we hard line it to here. And then, so this is the thermostat. So you have to control the oil temperature going to the front. It can't be too cold. So this is like a, a 190 thermostat out of a 911 Super Carrera. So this, obviously I've built all these lines. This bolt's here, here, this one. Here yeah. goes to the oil tank. Okay. Now, these are all dry sump. You know, I mean, you know if you worked on uh, they have yeah. oil tanks. Yeah. So we have a custom built, if you see, built yeah. oil tank built in there. So there's our, this line goes into there. This line comes over and is the exit out of the motor. Okay. So it comes in. If it's not hot enough, it just goes like this. And into, back into the tank. It's filtered. Okay. It dumps in the tank. Once this opens, the oil goes all the way up, travels through the cooler, all the way back, and then through the filter and into the tank. Gets dumped into the tank. The system should end up at about 14 quarts. I'm guessing. 12 to 14. That right there is 18 and a half. With a cooler on the nose. In the, in the, front, in the other fender. So I upgraded. That's an SC, a 79. Yeah. But I upgraded it to the radiator style cooler that's in the 84 newer Carreras. Okay. And now that engine has, from dry, nothing in the tubes, because I went through everything in that car. I've gotten 18 and a half quarts of oil in that car. It's a lot of oil. So we won't run quite that much, but we'll be pretty close. Because if you look at all those lines, they're all, they're co lines, so they're German, so they're not dashed. 12 or dash 16, they're actually 22 millimeter, uh, which is just short of an inch. Inch is 25 millimeter. These are all 22 millimeter hoses. And I, we built all of these hoses. You have all this stuff there. Yep, they're here. Brig! 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 So this rear bumper's getting been a big headache for all of us. So we actually collectively had an idea. I was joking that we should thread the, the bolt through preemptively without the washer because the, the bolt heads are small enough to fit through the holes in the chassis. And then we could just cut a hole in the washer, put it around the bolt and then, or like slice. So it's like a pie slice out of the washer put the washer over the bolt on the other side and then weld it up. That was just a joke. But that joke led to Jared having the idea of we could pre-thread the bolts through the bumper without the washers, put them up, make sure it lines up, and then take one at a time off, and then thread in the new ones with the washers on. It's a stupid, complicated thing, but this is gonna pain in the ass. So we tested it, it works. So now we pull it off to do it again with Loctite though. I honestly think it was this middle portion that was throwing us off from threading it ourselves because when we put in, we put in the bolt heads on both sides and then this, you can see it's off centered towards this side. And it was a pain in the ass for Jared to like. And that was all we needed was like one little millimeter or two. Yeah, so I, I think that it was this that was throwing it off. That 
trying to Only you tighten guys the oil cooler lines. You know I'm but What's the issue? Not enough like space. Not to, enough uh, space. If I had like right here, I could get it, but I could go and tighten it go this way. Is this one of the times where we uh, take a torch to the wrench and bend it so that you can get a better angle with it? I guess we're I guess we're doing a vanity plane now. No. <laughs> well, you, we got the inserts for it. Yeah, probably. In order, if this ever loosened up.